vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! Kevin Conroy was the definitive voice of Batman, and to this day I still hear his voice when I read a Batman comic. And I'm not alone in this. In fact, fans love him so much that they have even used AI to replace other Batman voice actors to see what it would have been like with Conroy playing the character instead. Who do you see when you look at me? The boy whose shoes you used to tie every morning? The teenager you drove to his first date? While you're here every night, I am out there. The only thing between the innocent and the predator. Now, as we all know, Kevin Conroy has sadly passed on. And I have not done a video on this subject before, as I have been waiting for his final work to be released. But now that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is out, I thought it would be a good time to take a look at Kevin Conroy's life's work, and to showcase the other characters that he has voiced over the years, besides Batman, as he was a very talented voice actor, and though Batman will of course be what he's remembered for, and naturally took most of his time, he did still perform other characters and we are going to take a look at these other roles that he has played. One such character is Captain Sunshine. Now, this character is kind of a combination reimagining of Batman and Superman. He essentially has Batman's life, but with the powers, more or less, of Superman. And the running joke is that he keeps adopting kid sidekicks, and they keep dying. Oh, really, sir? Not another one. Oh, but this one's perfect, Desmond. He's an orphan. And I think all Bat fans will appreciate this because it is a great little gag and parody of the many deaths of the Robins. Admittedly, this joke has been a little bit overused in recent years, but it was still relatively fresh when they did it. And Conroy does the role to perfection, being just the perfect hint of manic and serious, showing that not only can he do drama, but he very much can do comedy. You told me you were an orphan. I should be so lucky. Pop! All right, now, technically, I never said that. Were you ever even in the circus? Or did you lie about that, too? Now, as I said, we won't be looking at his Batman roles as much, but he did also play other roles in the DC Universe, such as Dick Grayson's father. Now, there is not a Batman fan alive who doesn't think that this was a genius bit of casting. As I said, he is the best voice of Batman, but in this particular show, Rhino Romero voiced Batman instead. But when the time come to introduce the character of Dick Grayson, the creators decided to get Kevin Conroy in as his dad, because it's just a beautiful little bit of fan service. I'm telling you, Mary, a leash is the only answer for that boy. Wait for us, son. And if you don't understand why it is, then I can't explain it. But if you do understand, you will no doubt agree that this was a fantastic idea and a great little nod to the previous Batman show. And quite frankly, the fanboy inside of me just loves this. How about if we call you our flying squirrel? Better? You know, Dad, I'm not the only one who looks like a loser. Loser? Well, I'll teach you. <laughs> and it's not only Grayson's father that Conroy has played in DC Animation. In the film Batman vs. Robin, we see flashbacks of Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas Wayne whom is of course voiced by Kevin Conroy. Do you think we'd ever let anything bad happen to you? No, never. I promise, your mother and I will always be here to protect you. Again, this is a little bit of fan service, as Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman, and having him be the new Batman's father has a certain something to it that just makes sense. It's made better by the fact that he's also teaching this Batman about the Court of Owls. And since all actors who play Batman naturally study Kevin Conroy's work, well, it kind of makes sense that he would be getting instruction from him. And it also makes it feel like a more civilised passing of the torch. And really, that is the best part about this, because Kevin Conroy taking these roles shows that he is not upset about not being cast as Batman, even though he is the fan favourite. In fact, he is clearly taking these roles in respect for his fans, giving us all a little Easter egg reference which is a very classy way for him to respond to this recasting. After all, he could have just flat out refused, but instead he accepted for both the fans and to show that there was no bad blood. And he also voiced Thomas Wayne in the Arkham Asylum video game, just as he did in the animated series, as this game series kept more or less the same casting from the show, at least as much as they could. And he has also played Alfred in the short Alfred, and in the show, Batman the Brave and the Bold, he featured twice in two different roles. One is as the voice of the Phantom Stranger, 
while at the same time, Mark Hamill, who is of course the voice of the Joker, the most famous one, is playing the role of the Spectre, and the Spectre is the spirit of vengeance. Justice. What is justice without vengeance, Phantom Stranger? And this is actually quite a good dynamic for this episode, because we have the classic voices of Batman and Joker, and each of them are giving advice to this new Batman. They're basically in his mind, kind of like the angel and demon sitting on his shoulder. And the plot of the episode is that Batman has finally got his hands on Joe Chill, the man who killed his parents. And Conroy is trying to help him to be a true hero, whilst Hamill is trying to make him kill Joe Chill and get his vengeance. Become what you have trained to be, an agent of vengeance. Now, of course, Conroy helps Batman to stick to his morals as a true hero, and he doesn't kill Joe Chill. He is beaten. Let your devotion to justice temper your rage. But then later, as the building they are in collapses, the Spectre makes sure that the falling debris lands on Joe Chill and kills him. So Batman not only sticks to his no-killing rule, but Joe Chill also gets what he deserves. So it's sort of a happy ending. But this is a great bit of casting. Just as Kevin Conroy is the definitive voice of Batman, Mark Hamill is of course the definitive voice of the Joker. And Batman and Joker are kind of like the forces of order and chaos respectively. So them voicing characters that are also enforcing order and chaos, well, it's just a great bit of fan service and a genius bit of casting on this show's part. And he also voices Batman, or at least the Batman of Zur and R in another episode. And welcome to the planet Zur and R. Here, I'm Batman. Now, this is when the Batman goes to an alien planet, and when he's there, he basically becomes Superman, because on this planet, humans get Superman's powers, just as Kryptonians get superpowers on Earth. Now, the whole episode is just a giant homage to Batman and Superman and their relationship. I understand how you feel. Do you? I wouldn't like it either if an alien with superpowers came to Earth to do my job. And not only is this episode an homage to their relationship and the dynamic of it, it also has a lot of voice actors from the 90s animation. But where did this other one come from? Which other planets support humanoid life? Basically, we have Clancy Brown, who played Lex Luthor, playing a character who is essentially Lex Luthor, and Dana Delaney, who voiced Lois Lane, is playing the reporter who is essentially Lois Lane who also kind of fancies the alien Superman, and yet the Kevin Conroy character, who's basically Clark Kent, is in love with her. But between a choice between a Superman and a mild-mannered alter ego, well, she's going to pick the Superman. But in this case, that's actually a different person, unlike it is on Earth. Incredible new hero in town. He can't be more incredible than Batman. See for yourself. Now, I might have put that a little bit convoluted, to be honest, but if you are a fan of the 90s Timverse animation, you will get this as soon as you watch it. But anyway, the whole episode is nothing but fan service to the fans of the 90s DC cartoons, and it is well worth a watch if you haven't already seen it. But not all of the DC characters Kevin Conroy has voiced are related to Batman. In the Shazam shorts, Conroy was the voice of Zeus, now, these shorts are just little jokes, really, featuring Billy Batson using his powers for pretty silly reasons, such as using the wisdom of Solomon to solve a simple math problem in school, as he needs to know when two trains will arrive at a certain point for a pop quiz maths test. Billy Batson, dare you test the patience of the elders by asking of us a simple childish math problem? No, Great Zeus, just Solomon. But they are entertaining shorts, and they are fun. And even though Kevin Conroy is not the star, he does do well as the God of Gods. And in the Green Arrow shorts, he is the voice of the police scanner, which I love as it is a little nod to how Batman has always been a better detective than Green Arrow. Despite all the other similarities in their characters, Batman has always easily surpassed him in the detective field. He also did voices for some of the other characters in the original Batman series. After all, at the time, he was just another actor. It was this role that launched him into the big time, so it does make sense that he would do other small roles as needed in order for the show to save a bit of money. Now, Conroy also featured in several video games as Batman, but he also voiced the villainous Hush in these games. This is a character named Thomas Elliot who has performed several surgeries to look and sound like Bruce Wayne. So Conroy had the wonderful job of voicing himself, or rather voicing someone pretending to be himself. So all he really had to do was just grumble his voice a bit to make it a little more growly. But still, he does it well. But you look just like Bruce Wayne. 
It took time, of course, to find the perfect donors, to graft on the flesh, and finally to lose myself in order to create this. And it isn't just the Batman video games that he has performed in. He starred in the series Crusaders of Might and Magic as the character Drake. Now this was the lead character, and oddly enough, even though this character has nothing to do with the world of DC, there are actually a lot of similarities between him and Batman. As Drake is the last surviving member of a massacre, who then seeks to get revenge against the one who killed his loved ones. And so he sets out and he trains for years to hone his skills, and he becomes a legend, who attacks his enemies from the shadows. So there are some definite parallels between the characters. The game is a third-person RPG that is fun enough to play through, but it's nothing special to be honest. And sadly, it is nowhere near as good as the Arkham series. But still, Conroy does a fantastic job as the one-liner Drake, whom is both deadly and kind of charming at the same time. Hey, where's my sword? This it? You gotta be more careful. And he also did several smaller roles in video games, voicing a fisherman in Jack and Daxter. You're having the basket. Nothing to talk about. Damn monsters patrolling the ocean took a bite out of me fishing rig. And now they're gobbling up me catch. Lord Jack in Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne, along with a couple of other minor characters, the Commando and Cleaner. Open up! You're just making this harder on yourself, Payne. Open the door. There were no guns at the morgue. I had to get past him to fight him. And he played Lord Palassa in Lords of EverQuest. Now, as I said at the beginning, I am not the only fan of Kevin Conroy. Not even close. All Batman fans are, including Kevin Smith. So yeah, I'll miss him forever. I was lucky to have known him at all. And more importantly, I was lucky to have had him as my Batman in my lifetime. I'll hear his voice from now until the end of time. Who has worked with many DC actors over the years, and he's even directed a few episodes of the Flash TV show. And he's also worked with the voice actor of the show Batman the Brave and the Bold, Diedrich Bader, who of course voiced Batman in this series. And he put him in a security role in one of his films as a little homage to this. So it comes as no surprise that he wanted to work with the voice of Batman. And so he had Kevin Conroy voice the mayor of Red Bank in the animated film Jay and Silent Bob's Groovy Cartoon Movie. And it makes sense that Kevin Conroy would be cast as the mayor. He is very much the man in charge, and of course, Kevin Smith would want him in this role. So, as a thanks for the never-ending battle against an array of supervillains who never seemed to exist prior to their emergence, Red Bank offers Blunt Man. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Red Bank offers Blunt Man and his sidekick this ceremonial key to the city. And in the old Johnny Quest series, he guest starred in a small role just called Hard Man. Not if I find it first, Mr. Graves. And this was around the time that Batman the Animated Series came out. So Conroy was a lot less famous than he is now, and he did do more minor roles at this point. And he's also narrated a TV film entitled Russian Yeti, The Killer Lives. Now, this is a fictional documentary on the deaths of students in the Russian mountains that the locals have attributed to the mythical Yeti. And the serious, deep tones of his voice add a certain legitimacy to the film. I mean, let's be honest, we all know it's not true, but he almost convinces you as you watch it. They were found face down in a straight line between the forest and the tent. The positions of their bodies suggested they were running for their lives. He also played quite a serious voice in the adaption of the classic Edgar Allan Poe story, The Raven. This is the story about a lonely man who misses his deceased love and is visited, and freaked out by, an otherworldly force, portrayed as The Raven. Now this was just a one-off short, and of course it does feature a lot of the poetry from the poem. And it is quite fun to listen to Batman reading you a poem, because it is Batman reading it, and he does a wonderful job with the verse ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore tell me what thy lordly name is on this raven's plutonian shore quoth the raven nevermore and he's also played some characters in the he-man franchise he portrayed the evil hordak in masters of the universe i am no one's servant of course you aren't you're my equal daughter and he voiced Merman in the spin-off show, Masters of the Universe Revelation. 
Sea Leech has no time to hear your pitiful pleas for life, but I have enough time to hear you die. And he had a recurring role on the show Welcome to the Wayne, featuring in seven episodes as the character Prismal, who is the main antagonist of season two, and he is the leader of Calliope and the true mastermind behind the spy from Apartment 81's plans. And of course, he had a guest role in Ben 10, where Conroy played one of the personalities of Alien X. Now, for those who don't know, Alien X is the most powerful alien that Ben can turn into, and he is basically all-powerful. In fact, I believe the universe was actually destroyed, and he rebuilt it at one point. So, we're talking proper god-level power. But he has a serious limitation. He has several parts to his mind, there are several personalities in there, and they have to be in complete agreement in order for him to do anything. And I mean anything, even take a single step forwards. And naturally, they never really agree on anything. And one of these parts of the mind is Bellicus, who is of course played by Kevin Conroy. Now, Bellicus is basically an angry god who doesn't really want to help people. In fact, he doesn't really want to do anything. Your so-called friends can take care of Earth. Let them pull their own weight for once. Now you're just being contrary. Says you. And he's usually the one that Ben has to convince in order to get things done. And he's not technically a villain or anything, but he's also not really a hero. He's kind of what a god would be. He's just, eh, I don't really want to, so why should I? I'm a god, I don't care. Which, let's be honest, if you are all powerful, you probably would be like that. Motion number 80 million and three. To save the dinosaurs from extinction. He's against it. Just listen, I'm sure I can win you over. And in the show Turbo Fast, which was a spin-off from the Turbo movie, he guest starred in one episode as Stinger. Though I'm not going to spend much time on this one, as snails freak me the hell out. I've traveled the world fighting Injustice Turbo, and now I bring the fight to Turbo Town. Injustice is a disease, and I am the cure. You talk cool. And on that note, those are his other voice acting roles. Of course, he also had live action roles, even once playing Batman in the Arrowverse. And of course, he was quite an accomplished stage actor. In fact, he was actually working on the stage when he first got the role of Batman. I had never done an animated voice before. I had never auditioned for an animated voice before. I was a stage actor. I went to Juilliard. I worked on Broadway, I worked off Broadway, I worked for Joe Papp at The Public. I was a New York actor. And he even says that he took inspiration from the world of theater to play the dark, gritty night. But this video was focusing on his voice acting abilities and nothing else. And as for the Batman Suicide Squad game, it is expected to be his last outing as the Dark Knight. Although there is still footage that has been recorded and not been used in all the films he made. After all, he starred in a lot of films, so they have a lot of his voice recorded, and they could very easily use some of it in future projects. And though there are rumours that he has recorded the audio for the upcoming Cape Crusader series, this has actually kind of been debunked, as Bruce Timm himself has said that they were planning to put him in the show, but unfortunately they could not get anything recorded before he passed away. And there are also rumours that he's going to appear in the third Infinite Crisis film, but again, nothing is confirmed at this point, and most likely, these are just rumours. Although, like I said, Warner Bros. do have footage of his voice that they could use, so they could very easily put him in this. But we don't know for sure yet, although I honestly think it would have been best if they could have put him in Cape Crusaders, because it would just be the perfect ending to his career. Bruce Timm started with him as Batman, and now they'll end it together. It's kind of beautiful. Not to mention it would be a better outing than the Suicide Squad game, as they do not do him justice, at least in my opinion. I mean, his ending is just... yeah. But unless they use previously recorded footage, or AI, it's not going to happen. And both do seem unlikely at this point, but fingers crossed it may happen, we'll just have to wait and see. And one last thing I do want to say is about the Suicide Squad game, and that is that a lot of people online and on my channel have been leaving messages saying things like, this is an insult to Kevin Conroy's memory, and that people have to boycott it, or they're being disrespectful to him. Now, like I said, I don't think they're doing him justice in the game at all. In fact, I think it is quite bad. But to say that it's some huge insult to his memory isn't really true. I mean, yeah, it's not great. It really isn't. And his ending is definitely not great. In fact, it's kind of terrible, to be honest. But it is just a game at the end of the day. It wasn't made as an homage to his memory. It's just a game a game he agreed to be in and that no one forced him to be in. So if we're sitting there saying this is an insult, really we're just putting words in a dead man's mouth, which in itself is very disrespectful. 
So I don't think we should do that. Yeah, we can say it's not good, and I would say it's not good, and I would say don't play it. But let's not turn this into a whole thing about his life. One bad role does not ruin a career, even if it is an actor's final performance. So instead of focusing on that and thinking it's an insult to his memory or this should have been done better or all that, let's forget it all and just remember the good times that he voiced Batman. As there are literally dozens of great Batman moments, I mean hell, there's probably hundreds of great Batman moments that Kevin Conroy gave us over the years. I mean, that is the very reason why Kevin Conroy will mainly be remembered for his iconic performance as the voice of Batman. He left behind a pair of shoes that are literally impossible to fill. He was an incredible entertainer and he will be greatly missed by us all. But at least we will always have his amazing work to remember him by.